Next, let's talk about implement and manage storage. You can configure storage accounts to accept requests from secure connections only by setting the secure transfer required property for the storage account. When you require secure transfer, any requests originating from an insecure connection are rejected. When secure transfer is required, a call to an Azure Storage REST API operation must be made over HTTPS. Any request over HTTP is therefore rejected. Connecting to an Azure file share over SMB without encryption fails when secure transfer is required for the storage account. Examples of insecure connections include those made are SMB 2.1, SMB 3.0 without encryption, or some versions of the Linux SMB client. By default, note that the secure transfer required property is enabled when you create a storage account. You can use private endpoints for your Azure storage accounts to allow clients on a virtual network to securely access data over a private link. The private endpoint uses an IP address from the VNet address space for your storage account service. Network traffic between the clients on the VNet and the storage account traverses over the VNet and a private link on the Microsoft Backbone network, eliminating exposures from the public internet. Using private endpoints for your storage accounts enables you to secure your storage account by configuring the storage firewall to block all connections on the public endpoint for the storage service, to increase security for the virtual VNet by enabling you to block exfiltration of data from the VNet, and securely connect to a storage account from on-premises networks that connect to the VNet using VPN or Express Route. You can limit your access to the storage account to requests originating from specified IP addresses, IP ranges, or from a list of subnets in an Azure virtual network. To secure your storage account, you should first configure a rule to deny access to traffic from all networks, including internet traffic, on the public endpoint by default. Then you should configure rules that grant access to traffic from specific VNets. You can also configure rules to grant access to traffic from select public internet IP address ranges, enabling connections from specific internet or on-premises clients. This configuration then enables you to build a secure network boundary for your applications. You can combine firewall rules that allow access from specific virtual networks and from public IP address ranges on the same storage account. Storage firewall rules can be applied to existing storage accounts or when creating new storage accounts. Communication between a client application and Azure storage account is encrypted using Transport Layer Security or TLS, which is a standard cryptographic protocol that ensures privacy and data integrity between clients and services over the internet. Azure Blob and Q storage accounts support Azure Active Directory authentication with managed identities for Azure resources. Managed identities for Azure resources can authorize access to blob and queue data using Azure Active Directory credentials from applications running in Azure virtual machines, function apps, virtual machine scale sets, and other services. By using managed identities for Azure resources together with Azure Active Directory authentication, you can avoid storing credentials with your applications that run in the cloud. If your development environment does not support single sign-on or log on via a web browser, then you can use a service principle to authenticate from the development environment. To create a service principle with Azure CLI and assign an Azure role, call the AZ ADSP create for RBAC command. Provide an Azure storage data access role to assign the new service principle. Additionally, provide the scope for the role assignment. This example shown uses the Azure CLI to create a new service principle and assign the storage blob data reader role to it with an account scope. A key advantage of using Azure Active Directory with Azure Blob Storage or Q Storage is that your credentials no longer need to be stored in your code. Instead, you, you can request an OAuth2 access token from the Microsoft Identity Platform. Azure AD authenticates the security principle running the application if the authentication succeeds, Azure Active Directory returns the access token to the application, and the application can then use the access token to request access to the blob storage or storage queue. Azure Storage offers different access tiers, which allow you to store blob object data in the most cost-effective manner. The available access tiers include HOT, which is optimized for storing data that is accessed frequently, 
cool, which is optimized for storing data that is infrequently accessed and stored for at least 30 days. Archive, which is optimized for storing data that is rarely accessed and stored for at least 180 days with flexible latency requirements on the order of hours. The following considerations apply to the different access tiers. Only the hot and cool access tiers can be set at the account level. The archive access tier isn't available at the account level. Hot, cool, and archive tiers can be set at the blob level during upload or after the upload. Data in the cool access tier can tolerate slightly lower availability, but still requires high durability, retrieval latency, and throughput characteristics similar to hot data. For cool data, a slightly lower availability service level agreement and higher access costs compared to hot data are acceptable trade-offs for lower storage costs. Archive storage stores data offline and offers the lowest storage costs, but also the highest data rehydrate and access costs. Storage accounts that support tiering. Object storage data tiering between hot, cool, and archive is only supported in the blob storage and general purpose V2 accounts. General purpose V1 accounts don't support tiering. This is important to note. Customers can easily convert their existing GPV1 or blob storage accounts to the GPV2 accounts through the Azure portal. General purpose V2 provides new pricing and features for blobs, files, and queues. Blob storage and GPV2 accounts expose the access tier attribute at the account level. This attribute allows you to specify the default access tier for any blob that doesn't have it explicitly set at the object level. For objects with the tier set at the object level, the account tier won't apply. The archive tier can be applied only at the object level. You can switch between these access tiers at any time. Created in Azure File Sync Service, so this is the step-by-step -step of how to do this. You have a prerequisite that you need an Azure file share. You then prepare the Windows Server, deploy the Storage Sync service, install the Azure File Sync agent, register the server with the service, and create an Azure Sync service group. Finally, you create an Azure Sync group and create a server endpoint. Configuring Azure Files. So there are a couple good links here at the bottom. This is a topic that you should be familiar with. First of all, where is it supported? Azure File Sync services are supported on Windows Server 2012 R2 and 2016. They are supported on NTFS volumes with compression, with DFS with the 1.2 agent, and supported on BitLocker, AIP, Azure Active Directory, RMS. They are, it is not supported where other file systems, period. For SysPrep, it is not supported with NTFS, EFS, encrypted file systems, or no other HSM. This is an important topic that you'll want to study if you're not familiar with it for the exam.